glad to be here. I, my name is Scott, and I'm a comedian. I've uh, I've done a lot of shows. I've been a comedian over 30 years. I've performed thousands of comedy shows. It's always been my desire to make people laugh, and I hope to do that someday. <laughs> Maybe tonight's the lucky night. <laughs> I've done okay in the career. Let's see, I've uh, I performed on TV, and I performed in Las Vegas and in Atlantic City on over 30 cruise ships, and I've never been slapped by Will Smith. <laughs> Yeah, I've been a comic for 30 years. Before I spent a short stint in the legal field, I was a defendant. <laughs> yeah, that worked out well. But I do okay on the ships. Yeah, I, my last cruise I was on, I, I, after my show, I was in the elevator. I get some good compliments. This guy in the elevator said, I mean, you're the funniest comedian I've ever seen. I've seen hundreds. We didn't say those exact words. He said, could you please press nine? <laughs> My, my favorite cruise compliment I ever got was this 86-year-old woman said to me, the parts of your show I didn't sleep through, I enjoyed very much. <laughs> but anyhow, I, I hope you've been having fun. Did you participate in the ship's games and activities? Because yeah. there are no losers when you participate in the ship's games and activities. And when you see what the prizes are, you realize there are no winners either. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, I like the ship. You like the ship? Yep. It's not a big ship, but we got everything we need. You know, it's, I've been on over 30 cruise ships, and this is my favorite. I'm not just saying that either. I love it here on the insert the name of this ship here. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Uh, but yeah, we got everything we need. You know, we were parked next to one of those mouse ships, and the mouse ships, they, they have no casinos. So our pastors out on deck yelling at them, we have a casino. <laughs> Their pastors were yelling back, we still have our money. <laughs> I like to gamble. I was at a casino on land, they had a sign up. It said, if you have a gambling problem, call this number. So I called it up, I said, I've got 12, and the dealer's showing seven. <laughs> hung up on me. <laughs> and what, what, what was your favorite part of the cruise? Ooh. Dinner. Yeah. Food. <laughs> We're here to eat, idiot. Have you not seen us? Yes. <laughs> Anytime they put food anywhere near you here, you look like baby birds. <laughs> I was in the buffet this week. There's a couple heading me in the buffet. The guy said to the woman, don't get too much. We're eating dinner in 15 minutes. <laughs> A little something to tide you over between third lunch and first supper, eh? <laughs> These are actually true. I heard a man say to his wife here, let's go eat. She said, I'm not hungry. He said, what does that have to do with it? <laughs> but my favorite was on the Oasis. A woman said to me, I was going to go to the spa's weight loss seminar, but it was during lunchtime. <laughs> put most of the dining rooms in the middle of the ship because the way you guys run to the food, if they put them in the back, the ship would pop a wheelie. <laughs> One guy was choking on something. Why were they high like him? He was still shoving another roll in. <laughs> and I, I've been on ships now on some of the, the newer ships. Some, some of the public bathroom stalls have phones in them. So you can actually call for room service while going to the bathroom. <laughs> Can you send a steak? I'm making some room. <laughs> oh, and a potato. <laughs> Be right there, sir. Make it quick. I'm going to dinner in 15 minutes. <laughs> but the truth is, they want you to eat here. It's the cruise ship industry philosophy. The cruise ship industry philosophy is keep them eating, keep them drinking, and they won't care if the ship is sinking. <laughs> By the way, if the ship is sinking and you have to get a lifeboat, you'll be charged $90 for the scenic ocean excursion tour. <laughs> As you get in a lifeboat, a photographer will take your picture. <laughs> As you stand next to a crew member dressed as Gilligan. <laughs> of course, the crew's the best. We got the best crew here, you know. 
And uh, the, the average crew member's here for nine months. You know, it's hard to wait, be away from home that long. You miss stuff. So I try to be the crew morale officer. Like, for instance, the other day, one of the waitresses had said she missed the way her dog would lay in her lap and lick her. <laughs> <laughs> you can call me Fido. Ruff, ruff. <laughs> Then one of the male dancers said he missed the way his cat would snuggle with him. I said, well, it gets lonely at sea, buddy. <laughs> and uh, we got a great captain. Did you meet the captain? Yeah. 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 Uh, here's my true favorite cap uh, true, true captain, sir. I was on a ship called the Universe Clipper. We had a medical emergency. We get some in the hospital. So the captain got on the phone. He got a nurse from the hospital on the phone. He said, this is the captain of the universe. <laughs> She said, yeah, and I'm Wonder Woman, and hung up. <laughs> Someone asked me, do I ever make a, a joke about the captain? I, I did once, and it was pretty cool. He was pretty cool about it. The only difference I noticed was my new room was lifeboat number five. <laughs> but the crew is great. And it's nice to be an entertainer because we get to meet you and you applaud us sometimes. But the people you should be applauding are the behind-the-scenes crew members, guys like the deck attendants, the dry cleaners, the guy in the kitchen who rearranges the leftovers so the people eat late think they're getting new food. <laughs> Those are the real heroes. <laughs> and uh, yeah, you're a classy crowd. I like you're classier than me. I got to say. I was talking to a woman this week. She said she liked the art of the painter Matisse. She asked me who my favorite modern painter is. I said uh, Sherwin Williams. <laughs> I know nothing about art. I once bought an ice sculpture as an investment. <laughs> and you're, you're classier than the Western Caribbean cr crowds we get, I gotta say. On the Western Caribbean crowds, we get these round guys in Speedos tanning themselves. By the end of the cruise, they look like a baked potato wearing a diaper. <laughs> and if you're a Speedo wearing guy who I've offended, you offended me first. <laughs> is that some of the women get their hair braided. Women, if you get your hair braided, if you come back looking like Bo Derek in 10, most of you come back looking like Bo Diddley in drag. <laughs> so I was on one ship, I saw a white guy with braided hair wearing a Speedo with a fanny pack. <laughs> when he went to the future cruise desk, they gave him another company's brochure. <laughs> See, interesting men on ships. After one boat drill, this guy came up to me. He had a big bare belly, Bermuda shorts on, black socks and sandals, a t-shirt that said, you look better than me after I have another beer. He goes, I lost my wife. I can't find my wife. Would you help me find my wife? I said, I don't know how you found a wife in the first place. <laughs> Face it, man. She's not lost. She escaped. <laughs> Complainers on ships. We get some good complaining. They always want to tell me about stuff for some reason. I was on one ship, a woman said to me, This is the worst cruise ever. I said, I can assure you, ma'am, the Titanic was far, far worse than that. <laughs> All right, we agree. <laughs> I was on an Alaska cruise. A woman said to me, I'm never going on Royal Caribbean again. Their weather is terrible. <laughs> got a comment card and it said, tell the captain to stop rocking the boat during dinner. <laughs> like the captain's up on the bridge going, now they're eating. <laughs> they don't do that. <laughs> we got a comment card and it said, the problem on this ship is the crew don't speak no good English. <laughs> if you so say. <laughs> The best are the room stewards. You got like your room stewards. Hey, my room steward couldn't get the lump out of my bed. He kept trying. Finally, I said, no, I ain't getting up. <laughs> They're very good. I left some underpants out. He folded them. People, I don't even touch my underpants without a stick. I wanted to shake his hand, but he touched my underpants. It's cooties. I was in the crew bar last night. I met a really nice crew member. She's from Honduras. She works in the kitchen. I asked her name. She said her name is Nabla. 
I think that's a pretty name. She said her full name is Nabla Inglés. <laughs> she seemed to like her name a lot. She kept telling it to me. <laughs> but she does seem to like me. She has a cute nickname for me now. She calls me El Gringo Stupido. <laughs> I love talking to pastors. I like talking to the kids on the ship because they're funny. I was talking to a little kid on the ship recently. I said, where do you live? He said, Troy, Ohio. I said, I'm from Ohio. Where's Troy? He said, you know the McDonald's? It's near that. <laughs> I was talking to one little kid on the ship. I said, how old are you? He said, six. I said, yeah, I once spent the whole year being six. And the kid said to me, you're an idiot. <laughs> Sadly, I could think of nothing to refute that. <laughs> I had a little kid in the ship bite me. He bit me. And the, the mother's doing nothing at all. I said, your kid just bit me. She said, when he bites you, it means he wants your attention. So I bit her. <laughs> the kid is right. It works. <laughs> But it's fun to talk to the adults, too. I was on an Alaska cruise last summer. I asked the pastor, I said, you excited to be in Alaska? He said, yeah, it's my first time out of the United States. <laughs> if you put your ear to his head, you could hear the ocean. <laughs> I said, next time you travel outside the United States, you should try Hawaii. <laughs> and he said, I might. <laughs> One guy, he said he just got back from New Zealand. I said, do you need a visa to go there? He said, no, they take MasterCard. <laughs> <laughs> These are true. We had a ventriloquist on the ship. I asked the pastor, I said, what did you think of the ventriloquist? He said, the guy wasn't all that funny, but the puppet was. <laughs> called up the front desk. She said, the microwave in my room is not working. The microwave. So I sent up a guy to see what's going on. She shoved a slice of pizza into her safe. <laughs> if you put pizza in your safe, the bad news is it's not going to cook. The good news is no one is going to steal your pizza. <laughs> We had one woman, I was her this in the diner, she asked one of our waiters, when's the last time you were home? He said, six months ago when my son was born. She said, oh, how old is your son now? <laughs> He's 29, they grow up so fast. <laughs> we had a woman went up to the tour desk, she said, well, I get wet if I go snorkeling. He said, ma'am, some people get more excited about it than others. <laughs> Day they let me help out at the tour desk. I'm tired. <laughs> but our whole country's nuts. Anyhow, I used to live in Los Angeles. That's Psycho Central. I was on Venice Beach. I asked this guy, I said, do you have the time? He said, sure. What do you want to do? <laughs> I want to run real fast. <laughs> we got some winners up north, too. I was in a pizza hut in Michigan that ran out of pizza. How does that happen? I ordered a pizza. She goes, we're out. I'm like, now you're just hut? <laughs> I was on a two lane in Michigan. They actually had a sign on the two lane that said, do not attempt to pass when opposing traffic's present. <laughs> what does the next sign say? Don't pull the pit bulls pee pee. I saw this on the news in Detroit. A guy, a guy she said this on the news. A burnt, dismembered, and headless body was found in a dumpster today. Foul play is suspected. <laughs> we sure. <laughs> I used to work at a blood bank. I asked people questions whether they could donate their blood. I asked this guy, I said, what is your ancestry? He said, what do you mean? I said, where were your forefathers from? He said, I've only got one father. <laughs> no blood from you. <laughs> One guy said, what's your birthday? He said, June 15th. I said, what year? He said, every year. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I used to work in a retail store. A guy called me up. He said, how late are you open? I said, till closing time. He said, thank you, and hung up. <laughs> oh, I called the Walmart. Asked guy to answer. I said, how late are you open? He said, today? I said, yeah, today. He said, we're open till 10 o'clock every day. <laughs> I said, your manager must love you. He said, I am the manager. <laughs> I got an idiot friend. You know, when that mad cow disease came out, he said, we're going to stop eating steak and stick with hamburger. <laughs> he just told me he signed up to go on his first cruise. I said, go, where are you going? He said, we're going to three places. We're going to St. Thomas, we're going to St. Martin, and we're going to Sea Day. <laughs> What do you know about Sea Day? He said, nothing, but it must be good. We're going there three times. <laughs> I said, if you decide to get off the ship in Sea Day, take your bathing suit because there's some good swimming there. <laughs> I know a woman who works for a doctor. A woman patient came in. The doctor said to her, are you sexually active? She said, no, I just lie there. <laughs> I know her. <laughs> oh, I was watching the Family Feud. Oh, we got asked, name a classic movie that begins with the letter C. She said, Sea Biscuit. <laughs> the other one I liked on Family Feud, a guy got asked, name a historical European leader. He said, Neapolitan. <laughs> His entire family went, good answer. <laughs> Neapolitan, and then don't forget his friend the painter, Pablo Pistachio. <laughs> the only thing I want this family to win is a vasectomy for dad. <laughs> oh, I was at a mall in Maryville, Indiana, I asked the customer service desk, I said, where's the bathroom? She said, do you want the nearest one? <laughs> I want a bathroom in Nicaragua. <laughs> I said, are you mocking me? I said, lady, I'm going to be peeing in front of you in a second. The mocking's going to seem like the good old days. She said, I'd like to give you a piece of my mind. I said, don't give me too much. You don't have a lot to spare. She's been to Sea Day. Oh, my. I love stupidity because it's good for comedy. I have high hopes as a comedian. You know, Jim Carrey started out as a janitor, and he's one of the highest paid comedians in the world. A lot of people see similarities between me and Jim Carrey. They tell me I should be a janitor. <laughs> I work a lot. In the summers, I work a lot at county fairs, and there's some scary people at county fairs. Do you agree with that? Yes. To me, the scariest are the livestock judges. I just think that any man who can claim to be an expert on which sheep is the prettiest has a lot of explaining to do. <laughs> Why do you laugh? Because if you're not with me on that one, the show is over. <laughs> I work at uh, corporate parties. I just did a corporate party. They were handing out an award to this guy for perfect attendance, and he wasn't there that night. <laughs> I recently did a country club. They were very rich and a little snooty, I have to say. One guy said to me, do you belong to a club? I said, yes. He said, what's the name of your club? I said, it's the Costco Price Club. <laughs> Charter member. <laughs> People always ask, how did you become a comedian? Well, I was really bad at school. <laughs> I remember the worst trouble I got in school was in high school geometry class. The teacher asked me to name three well-known triangles. I said, an isosceles triangle, a right triangle, and you, your wife, and the mailman. <laughs> he said, you can just tell that to the principal. I did, he laughed too. <laughs> teacher said, I think in your future career, math will be a little bit more important to you than telling jokes. Wrong again, big boy. <laughs> can't do math to save my life. Those story problems, remember those math story problems? Uh, I couldn't do those. The, the man, they never made sense to me. A man had two machines that could each pump six gallons of water per hour. If you use one pump alone for eight hours and both pumps together for 12 hours, what is Johnny Depp's current blood alcohol level? <laughs> Remember those two trains that were heading towards each other? <laughs> yeah, they started 200 miles apart. One was going 80 miles an hour. One was going 60 miles an hour. When would they intersect? 
I wrote never. One was an Amtrak. It derailed. <laughs> I got full credit for that. <laughs> I said Indian school. I remember uh, uh, one, one class the teacher said to us, there's no such thing as a dumb question. I went, who put the ram in the ram a lam ding dong <laughs> If Barack Obama's mama married the Dalai Lama, would she be the Obama Mama Lama? <laughs> We're waiting. <laughs> and the dumbest thing I did in school, I got caught copying. I was stupid enough to copy off the dyslexic kid. <laughs> Teacher became a little suspicious, went for the question, who is the father of our country? Two of us wrote, Egro Egg Naughty Wash. <laughs> Good kid, the dyslexic. His name was Bob, lucky for him spelling wise. <laughs> I graduated high school. I went to college. Not a good school. I went to South Texas University Prep in Dallas. Good old S T U P I D. Does anyone need more time? Any alumni here? Actually, I went to Ohio State. I was wearing an Ohio State shirt and a ship. A woman came up and she goes, you from Ohio? I said, yeah. She goes, my husband is from Pennsylvania. <laughs> what a small world. <laughs> I got a cousin in North Dakota. Hug me. <laughs> I was a serious student in college. I was a plagiarism major with a minor in peripheral vision. <laughs> Before one test, I asked this guy, I said, how do you think you're going to do? He said, I'll do my best. How about you? I said, I'll do your best, too. <laughs> one test, I'm staring at this guy's paper, and I realized he was staring at my paper. <laughs> Two idiots waiting for something to get written. <laughs> He's in worse shape than me. I looked at his paper. He'd written my name down. <laughs> <laughs> He's a congressman now. <laughs> Statistics test, I got three out of 100 on a statistics professor called me and said, Scott, you got three out of 100, that's 19 standard deviations below the mean. You know how bad that is? I said, obviously not. <laughs> he said, what happened? I said, the guy next to me is stupid. <laughs> he said, if you don't know anything, what company do you think is going to hire you? Folks, the answer is Royal Caribbean. <laughs> I didn't do any drugs. The closest I came, one night I had to write a 15-page paper that's due the next day, so, so I, I, someone gave me these speed tabs to take. He, he said, they're each equivalent to four cups of coffee. I took three. I never did it again for two reasons. Number one, if I wanted to blink, I had to do it manually. <laughs> Number two, I wrote a 15-page paper that didn't have one period in it. <laughs> I graduated college. I turned out to be an English major. And I always wish my two favorite authors would have written a book together. It would be Dr. Seuss and Stephen King. The satanic cat in the hat. <laughs> the sun did not shine. It was too wet to play. So we sat in the house on that cold and wet day. I sat there with Sally. We sat there, we too. And I said, oh, I wish we had something to do. Then we looked and we saw him step in on the mat. We looked and we saw him, the satanic cat. He lunged right for Sally with his big furry mitts. And in seconds, he turned into kibbles and bits. He was mad and enraged. He looked drunk. He looked hootered. What made him so mad? Then I saw he'd been neutered. <laughs> We're on vacation! Yeah. I graduated college, then I was interviewing for a job. The best part's the resume. The resume is just a great chance to look back on your life and improve it. I like what people write on the resume. I had a friend on his resume who wrote, graduated first in my class. His last name is Adams. They handed his diploma first. 
In our experience, he wrote, worked in the automobile industry and finance. He worked a highway toll booth. <laughs> I punched my resume too. One guy's reading, he goes, Oh, I see you're very fluent in Latin. Well, that's actually pig Latin, you um de upper se. Then <laughs> <laughs> a minute, you always get asked stupid job in your questions. My favorite is, uh, What are your three worst qualities? What are you supposed to say? I worship Satan, I wear women's underwear, I know which sheep is the prettiest. <laughs> I did an interview. Well, I got rejected by General Mills. I don't think that interview went well. They sent me a letter that said, not only do they not want me to work for them, they don't want me eating any of their products. <laughs> I did bad. I got rejection letters from companies I didn't even interview with. They said General Mills told them about me. <laughs> but my worst interview, I think, I'm sitting there for an hour with my legs crossed like that. It's going really bad. Finally, the thing ended, I didn't realize is my entire left leg had fallen completely asleep. So I get up, I take one step towards the man, I fall head first into his lap. He said, son, that's too little, too late. <laughs> and one job I was history, and they said it wouldn't take me because I'm Jewish. That's illegal, they can't do that. I think I would have made a good priest, too. <laughs> So I was unemployed. My father made me go to success seminar. I really fit in there. This guy said, nothing is impossible. I said, lick the back of your neck. <laughs> <laughs> I got my money back. <laughs> so then I started doing the comedy, which I love. And uh, yeah, I love doing the ships the best. People always ask, do you have any memorable cruises? Well, I had never done a world cruise. I finally did a hundred, I did a hundred day world cruise. I was always wondering what kind of pastors go on a 100-day cruise. It was an interesting crowd. I was talking to one of the kids on the ship. He was 70. <laughs> He's with his parents. <laughs> the ship had two dining rooms plus a Meals on Wheels program. <laughs> on the bright side, if I told them a joke they liked, I could just wait a minute and tell it again. <laughs> and if I told them a joke they liked, I could just wait a minute and tell it again. <laughs> Even their captain was old. He had our left turn signal on all the way to Africa. <laughs> We're done. <laughs> I, I gotta go. Anyhow, I, you're a really good group. Uh, people ask, you know, what do you uh, consider? What's what's the key to your act success? I believe it's my choreography. <laughs> I was voted favorite performer by the Spotlight Operators Association eight years in a row. <laughs> now, I started on Royal Caribbean, they said, you don't move much, do you? I said, you pay me more if I move? They said, no. I said, do you have a recliner? <laughs> and I'm all the time. Thanks a lot. Thanks a great group.